Welcome back to The Vocal Athlete. This week, we're looking at practice and performance. Practice, practice, practice. One of the most important things a vocal athlete does is practice. Consistent, focused, and planned practice. This is one of the areas where the correlation between athlete and singer makes the most sense. Elite athletes are always training through strength and cardio training as well as mental training. This is all without the time spent practicing their specific sport. There are no parts of this that singers do not engage in in some way. Let's look at each part a little closer to see how it's the same or different. Strength training. There are dozens of muscles directly or indirectly involved in singing. While it is possible to do strength training to build up many of the supporting muscles, your thyroid muscles are likely as bulky as they need to be. Instead, let's think more about strength training as endurance training. Runners increase their muscular endurance by slowly increasing the distance, duration, or speed of their runs. Singers build their endurance in much the same way, singing louder, longer, or higher. Let me recommend going for longer or higher as singing louder can increase some risk. How much endurance you need, though, is likely going to depend on what your goals are. A few songs during karaoke will require less than being a professional on Broadway singing eight shows a week. As we look at cardiovascular training, I think you probably already see this one. It takes air to sing, depending on who you ask, a lot of air. Hint, it's not true. And if you are singing musical theater or other contemporary commercial styles, there's a good chance you are running and dancing while you are singing, which will require more oxygen and will raise your heart rate. Looking at improving your cardiovascular system, the best methods are the same no matter what you're doing. Go do cardio workouts. Practice time. To me, practice time has two major parts. Skills practice and repertoire. This is where I see the most amateur singers make mistakes because singing songs is way more fun than practicing scales. Unfortunately, singing songs is a very slow path to improving as a singer. In baseball, we see batting practices, throwing, catching. In football, American football, you practice tackling, throwing, catching, and kicking. All of these skills are practiced repeatedly and in isolation. In singing, we have several skills to practice as well. Scales, intervals, patterns, different vocal fold masses, thick, thin, stiff, chest, head, breathy mix, different types of breaths, vowels at different pitches, and so many other things. And yes, all of these things are part of singing songs. But just like playing a sport, while singing all of these things are happening at the same time. Because of this, you cannot focus on everything at the same time. Repertoire practice is the fun part, playing the game, if you will. This is the time where it all comes together and it works or it doesn't. If you've worked on your skills enough, typically it works. With sports and with singing, additional factors come into play that distracts from the bass skills. In singing, we add words, emotions, and other musicians. So the question might be, what should my practice be? Skipping past strength and cardiovascular training, we'll discuss them more in a later segment. Your singing practice will be different depending on your age and goals. No matter your age, if your goal is simply to have fun singing, skip straight to the singing and have a great time for as long as it is fun. If you're looking to develop yourself as a singer, here are a few guidelines. Make a plan and stick to it. Decide what your goal is for each practice session before starting. Be specific with your goal. It doesn't have to be a big goal. In fact, small achievable goals will be more motivating. Think, sing a D minor scale perfectly at 80 beats per minute, or say the words in verse 2 perfectly five times. Notice that each time the goal is to do the task as perfectly as possible. Short but consistent practice sessions 
with the exception of working on your vocal endurance, long singing sessions will not help you develop. A 20 to 30 minute session daily or twice daily if you can manage it will help you improve faster than longer, less frequent sessions. Practice your skills. How you divide your time will depend on your specific goals, but you will be tempted to spend more time on repertoire than your skills acquisition. Don't give in to this. If your goal is to improve your scales, intervals, and other vocal exercises are where you will improve the fastest. Record yourself. Everyone's least favorite thing to do. Record your sessions and listen to them. Develop a critical listening ear. What did you do well? And what could you have done better? Take it a step farther and be specific on how things could be better. Use that to set goals for your next session. A vocal athlete practices almost oh, certainly. Consistent, focused, and planned practice is what it takes to be an elite athlete and an elite singer. Have you practiced today? The big game, also known as performances. At the end of the day, this one is pretty simple. Singing is a performance art. Whether that be in front of thousands, a few friends, or alone in your car. Like a runner, football player, dancer, tennis player, or any other sport you'd like, all of the practice eventually is put together into a moment. It can be easy to let that moment take a hold and just go with the flow. It'll happen sometimes, and that can be magical. But the goal is to remain focused and in control. As we touched on last time, a large number of things, not mercury, will affect your voice. How it responds and how it feels each time you step on stage or up to the mic. What you will need is your wits and to follow the plans you made during your practice to be successful every time. Unlike with sports, it is rarely the time for a Hail Mary uh, during a performance. Save it for after you've practiced it and can execute it 100% of the time. While an incredible batting average is .3333, singers do not get the same margin of error. An audience much more or less um, expects perfection every time. Don't let the drive for perfection stop you, though, from telling an amazing story. Perfection won't save a drive performance, but emotion won't save you if you're only 33% accurate either. There certainly are differences between being an athlete and a vocal athlete when you look at performances, but I do think this one is a great comparison. Give it your all, trust your practice, and enjoy the game. But like one of my mentors likes to say, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. Join us next week for the next installment of The Vocal Athlete.